Good day, good day, comrade subscribers. Hope you're all well. A bit of a humid night tonight. Uh, where's the Wonson's Electricity House thermometer? So that's okay. So it's about half past eight. Uh, remember, Wonson's Electricity House, Darwin, phone number three four eight seven. <laughs> Keep cool. But uh, looks like tonight it is a bit humid. Hang on, I've got to get the right angle, don't it? There we go. What do you reckon? What do you reckon? Just 30 and a half degrees? 31, maybe 31 degrees? Upper state at night. So, uh, yeah, just on the weekend, I think um, wearing a jumper because it was uh, we had a lot of rain and stuff. Anyway, uh, such as off. What was that? There we go. Um, I just thought before I start, I just thought I'd show you my uh, refurbished um, Fujitsu Siemens keyboard. So from the UK, I didn't take a video, but I did, well, the video, um, it's from, I was using it on my Gigatron. Basically, the keys were okay, but well, they were a bit grubby, but the um, the face here, the, the case was yellowed. It was really bad, badly yellowed. So I've just given it three coats of, of spray paint uh, a few weeks ago, let it harden, and I've just put the keys back in today, put the little label back in, Put the little LED lights back in, and um, I think it's come up, come up quite nicely. So I thought I'd just show that off before we start. So I'll be using this. So it's got a, um, it's got a PS2 wherever I put the cable. <laughs> PS2 um, interface. That's why I was using it on the Gigatron. So um, yeah, I thought it looked quite nice. Anyway, on with the uh, topic of this video. Okay, so once again, massive thanks to PCP Way for uh, helping me out with all of these goodies for the QL. Um, for this particular video, we're going to be looking at the um, the VGA interface. So I, I ordered that separately, <coughs> and we'll go through these in a, in a little moment. But um, yeah, so I ordered this. I know every time I've been banging on about. Uh, global direct shipping um, option so I ordered this and it shipped on 11th of January and it arrived yesterday 21st of January so that's uh, 10 calendar days and that's um, up to me in Port Macquarie so it arrives in Sydney and it takes about two or three days to get up to port so um, if I was living in Sydney and probably be looking at about seven eight days um, and that's five bucks basically shipping five bucks for 10 PCBs uh, shipped. Well, it's 10 bucks, five bucks for the PCBs and five bucks for the shipping. So, um, but obviously, as I keep saying, your your experience may vary, um, but certainly for me here in um, rural Australia, as DHL classes us, they add 33 extra dollars on top of the normal shipping. So it's a choice of, like $54 shipping via DHL and it arrives here in maybe four days or $5 shipping and it arrives here in 10 days. So yeah, definitely uh, definitely check out Global Direct Shipping as um, could save you a lot of money, if, especially if you're like me and you're jumping all over the place. So you know, for, for example, you order this and then you know, you've got to order parts. So for me, you know, it's, it takes a week or two for parts to come in. So um, it, it works out well. Anyway. So this is the um, the VGA interface that I'm going to be doing in this video. Um, we'll look at these other ones just quickly as well. Um, so what we have here, all the links are in the video description as usual. So this is a 512k RAM expansion. So this goes inside the machine. Um, I don't have it open at the moment, but there's a um, is it a DIN four one six. <laughs> Four two or something. Four anyway, it'll be below um, connector that this plugs into, and then it's got another one here, so you can daisy chain it. So that should add five hundred twelve k to my to my QL. So I've got that, and I've got here um, replacement um, Pico drive, uh, Pico drive, micro drive. Uh, but here it's called the micro Pico Pico drive. So again, I've got parts kind of, because uh, it's a mixture of surface mount and bits and pieces. So it's going to take me a while to build this. 
but uh, it's got basically an edge. It uh, uses a, a Pi, um, Raspberry Pi Pico um, on there, and it's got an edge connector. And then you've got um, these are basically your your micro drive um, cartridges. So there's two types, and they differ based on the the wings here. So these this one here is a bit bigger, so it's easier to pull out. And whereas this one's a bit smaller, so it's supposed to be able to fit into a, an original micro drive case. But we'll have a look at that when, once we get to that. This is all a different video. I just wanted to show you. Um, so you've got an edge connector there. So this is obviously in your QL, and this I think has got some um, uh, micro SD interface there, and I think a little screen as well, a little OLED screen and some switches, so you can select the um, uh, micro drive cartridge image and then you just plug it in like that and pull it out so I thought that would be interesting to, to give it a try so but I need to get all the parts for those so that'll be later this video is uh, basically this uh, VGA interface which looked pretty simple basically it's a bunch of, of resistors and a micro uh, Raspberry Pi Pico so I thought that might be so normally what I do is I just normally um, just dump it into the, let me grab it, the GBS 8200. I normally just dump it into here, RGBS, and uh, what I get is what I get. But the um, the QL's resolution is a bit, bit of an oddball apparently, so I thought I'd try one of these solutions. So we've got VGA on one end, a whole bunch of resistors. Um, I'm going to put a pin header here. So this will be the um, from the DIN from the eight pin DIN RGB output from the QL. We'll go into there. We've got a bunch of resistors and stuff, and then obviously we've got the the uh, Pi Pico on top. So the Pico needs to be powered as well. So we'll have an extra USB cable. Um, and this also comes with a case. So my neighbour Chris, shout out to Chris, very kindly printed this for me. Um, he said he was out of black, so I said, oh, it doesn't matter, <laughs> surprise me, so he's printed this for me. So I just need to, I think, take these supports off. So let me very carefully break these supports off, and we'll have a quick look. Jeez, I'm <laughs> sweating, sweating buckets here. Okay, so that's the end result, looks pretty good. So, I believe it goes like that, so that'll be for the Pico. I guess it goes like that. Okay, and then this goes on here, like so, and then we've got the um, the RGB output from the QL, and uh, USB power. Alright, so, let's start making this, I guess. Alright, so, for some reason, I've got a bunch of these, I didn't, I didn't realise I had these. So it saves me having to order them. I must—I got them ages ago when I was doing Arduino stuff. So that's good. So that'll be what the Pi Pico. Sorry, the Pico sits on. So I just want to make sure I stick those in there. Oh, I'm gonna have to. Yep. Yeah. So I can reuse the Pico. So I'm. <laughs> push that down so it will sit like that and that should hopefully mean there we go okay yep so I can charge it or yeah power it cool all right but obviously first of all I need to put all the resistors in before we do anything Okay, and here we go. After a bit of effort, well, I think I did okay there. So, Pico goes on top, can be reused. reused. I'm just going to program it there, and then make up the um, make up the RGB cable from the QL, and then that should slide in nicely into there cool 
There we go. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's an LED there. I'm not sure. But um, that should work. That should work. All right. I'm going to go program it. And I think probably tomorrow, because it's getting a bit late here, <laughs> I need to go have a shower. Um, I'll get the QL out. QL out and um, we'll see if it um, if it works. Good morning. Much cooler today. Right, let's continue. So <clears throat> I've got everything. Well, let me just ah, there we go. So everything's nicely in the box, but I still need to connect it to the computer. So I've got my eight pinned in. Correct one this time. And unfortunately, I don't have any. So I obviously, I need a five pin, but I don't. I've only got six pin. Um, long, long, wired ones. So I'm going to have to um, use one of these, chop the end off, and uh, do something like that. I think so that fits into there, and then that plugs into the computer. And I'll have to order some more from AliExpress, some longer ones. So I'll do that next, and then we'll give it a try. I've worked out a solution. So I'm just. Uh, pulled all the wires out of the five way and I'm going to pull out five wires from one of the bigger ones hopefully matching the colors red green blue white I guess for sync or maybe yellow or maybe white <clears throat> and uh, black for ground and then yeah then I've got my nice long wires so I think I'm going to do that and here we go so that should be all right so what I'll do is I'll um, I'll show what the composite output looks like again. Uh, which way did this go? So ground, I should make a little mark. That, that's ground, pin one. Like so. There we go. I probably, I might pull those out again and maybe put some, um, just some heat shrink along. So this isn't so unwieldy. Uh, but anyway, that should uh, work. But we'll try... Um, We'll do the old composite PAL output first, just to compare. Although we did do it in the last last video, and then we'll have a look to see how this uh, Wunderbar Q, uh, VH, Direct VGA output goes. Although what I do is I um, so the composite output's going to go via this Avancore Composite AV, so AV in to HDMI, and then I've got a HDMI to USB on my Mac. I use QuickTime to capture, and for the VGA, I've got this VGA to HDMI converter. So that'll be the difference. Right, first of all, composite PAL. Let's see how this goes. Power on. Okay. And what was it? F1. Oh, F1. There we go, a bit noisy. Oh, I was going to do um, try and find a demo program. Let me try and find a demo program to do some graphics if, it, if it's not too many lines. Let's not worry about graphics program. I couldn't find one. So let me start recording. So I'm onto the QL VGA adapter now. QL to VGA. Got it all connected up. Start recording. Uh, power on the adapter. Cool. All right. All right. Signal. Okay. That's because the computer's not on. Turn on the computer. Get an output. Okay. That's looking much better. Much better. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So I actually had a look what the um, what the screens are. So on the left hand side, red ink on white paper is the listing window. Right hand side is the execution window, which is window number one. So listing window is window number two. Execution window on the right is window number one, which is white ink on red paper. And then down the bottom, we've got the console window, which is window number zero. Green ink on black paper. So that's where we can, I think, do we have auto on here? Yes. Okay, line 100, fair enough. Okay. Print. That's looking much better. That's looking really good. Okay. 
at that. All right, and was it escape? Was it control space? How do I? All right. Okay. Cool. Oh, I'm happy with that. That's really nice and simple. Something simple to build. Cool. And then it was control space to quit. Perfect. Okay. That works. So, yes. Thank you very much to PCB Way for uh, helping me out with that. And, of course, my neighbour Chris for printing the case. That's, um, that's really simple. So, yeah, I think I might just um, sort this wiring out a bit. But, um... It works. Perfect. Okay. I just got to get all the microdrive, <coughs> excuse me, all the microdrive stuff working so I can actually load some software. Okay. Hopefully that was interesting, useful. Bye for now.